Hi there, David here yet again, coming to you on behalf of Be in Crypto. Today, we're going to talk a bit about decentralized exchanges. Also called DEXs, these types of exchanges form a major portion of the DeFi ecosystem. We've spoken generally about them before in our DeFi and yield farming videos, but today we'll get a little bit deeper into how to use them and actually make exchanges on them. In today's video, we'll be covering what are decentralized exchanges and how do they work? What are the risks involved? We'll talk about a few of the more popular DEXs out there, and at the end, we'll walk you through how to make a basic exchange on Uniswap. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get right into it with a look at just what a decentralized exchange actually is. A DEX is basically exactly what its name says, an asset exchange that is inherently decentralized. Traditionally, exchanges have been run by centralized companies who are then responsible for all aspects of how that platform operates. Normally, entities known as market makers form the backbone of all trading on a platform by providing the majority of the liquidity. This is usually from the reserves that the exchange itself is holding or from major players operating on the exchange. By placing orders on both the buy and sell sides of the order book, they make it possible for other traders called market takers to be able to execute their own trades with maximum efficiency. Decentralized exchanges, however, handle all of this with pure code, meaning there's no central authority that has any power over the system. This is made possible because of smart contracts that act as automatic market makers. We won't get too technical about it here, but basically AMMs act to guarantee liquidity in the market via algorithms instead of any human intervention. The liquidity comes from providers, which could be anyone, who are incentivized to lock their tokens into liquidity pools in return for a share of all network fees. We outline liquidity pools in much greater detail in our yield farming video, so check that out if you'd like to learn more. The point is, DEXs can offer virtually all of the functionality of a centralized exchange, but with notably lower fees, no know your customer requirements, and no type of registration. This obviously has many benefits and is attractive to a variety of users, but it is also completely unregulated and as such comes with some level of risk. For one, while it's true you don't have to trust a person or a company, you do need to trust the smart contracts you're interacting with. Ideally, make sure the code has been audited and get some feedback from the community before you decide to put any of your hard-earned cryptocurrency on the line. That being said, there are several prominent services already out there that, at least at the time of this video being recorded, seem to be functioning just fine and operate as they're supposed to. However, even when everything works, there are still some potential issues to consider. One is called slippage. Slippage means the difference between the expected price of a trade versus the actual price that gets executed. This can happen because the market moves just as an order is going through, or when liquidity is too low, the trade itself can actually move the market, sometimes quite a bit. While there are usually some safety nets in place, if a user isn't careful, they can end up paying more or receiving less than they had originally anticipated. This is best combated by paying careful attention to how much liquidity is available for the asset you're trying to exchange, and staying away from smaller volume pools. Services like Uniswap offer the ability to set slippage tolerances that will cancel a trade if it's going to move the price past a certain percentage, which can certainly help to at least mitigate some mistakes. One more serious issue to watch out for on DEXs are scam tokens. Since everything is user-run and unregulated, often anyone can deploy a new asset to the ecosystem. While this gives freedom and flexibility to project developers, it also paves the way for scammers to make virtually identical copies of existing tokens, all in the hopes of confusing users who are trying to purchase the real asset. The name and icon can be exactly the same, the only obvious difference will be the address of the smart contract you're interacting with. This is why you should always follow official links from the developer's website when looking to trade new tokens on decentralized exchanges. By sticking only to verified links, you should be able to avoid scams. As we've said on here before, if you aren't 100% sure that what you're doing is the right thing, then stop and reevaluate the situation before making any final decisions. Okay, now that we've given a general overview and outlined some of the risks, let's touch on a few of the most popular platforms. First up, we have to again mention Uniswap. We've spoken about Uniswap plenty on here before, and it's the exchange that we'll be doing a tutorial on shortly. So just for now, remember that it's the decentralized exchange that has the highest liquidity at the time this video was made. Also, there's SushiSwap, which is basically a clone of Uniswap, but with some changes made to how the fees are distributed. Otherwise, it works in much the same way and also boasts one of the highest levels of volume out there. Next, there's Curve Finance. Curve is a DEX that caters specifically to stablecoins and other pools of equally valued tokens, so for example, two different forms of wrapped Bitcoin. It is therefore a highly efficient way for traders to swap between different stable assets as well as for liquidity providers to earn decent returns without being subject to impermanent loss. Also, Curve has a specific list of available pools and doesn't just let anyone start a new one, which means you can trust the trades you make on here and not worry about the previously mentioned scam tokens. One more decentralized exchange we should mention is Balancer. Balancer acts in many ways like Uniswap and SushiSwap, only it actually gives even more control to liquidity providers. 
Creators of pools can have up to eight different assets represented, and it doesn't have to be an all-equivalent ratios. Furthermore, they can set their own fees for every individual pool instead of a flat, unchangeable fee as with many other services. There's plenty of other DEXs out there, many with their own nuances, but we just don't have time to cover them all here, so I would encourage you to explore them all in depth on your own. Now, however, let's do a quick tutorial on how to do a simple exchange on a DEX like Uniswap. So for this, head over to app.uniswap.org. We'll put a link in the description as well, but again, you always want to make sure that the address is correct. As you can see, the interface is quite simple, and it should default to this swap window. The very first thing you need to do is connect a wallet, of course, so go ahead and do that now. Many wallets are supported, but as usual, I'm going to go with MetaMask. Okay, once you're connected, you'll want to select what assets you're swapping. I'll set it up now to swap some Ethereum for some basic attention token, just as an example. Just fill out the box for how much ETH you want to spend, or you can hit max. I'm going to put in 0.01 Ether, and it should populate with how much BAT I'll be getting. Okay, now you'll see all the basic information about the trade. It estimates I'll be getting about 17 BAT. It tells me what the price is, and down below we can see the minimum received, meaning the transaction will cancel if the system cannot get us at least that amount of BAT. Next, we see the impact my trade should have on the market price. In this case, it is very small, but much larger trades or trades made in smaller pools can of course have a greater impact. Next is the liquidity provider fee. That's what you're paying to whatever pools you're using to make this trade. We'll come back to this in one second, but it's not the same as paying gas on Ethereum, so just be aware that this isn't the only fee you'll be paying. Lastly, we see the route that Uniswap will take to make this trade. In this case, it'll be swapping my ETH for USDC first, and then swapping that into BAT. Also notice that in the top right, there's a settings button. This is where you can set your tolerance for slippage and also a maximum transaction time. And again, the exchange will cancel if these limits are triggered. Don't worry about the interface settings below for now, as they're more advanced than we're getting into today. Okay, if you're happy with what you see here, then hit swap. This will bring up a confirm swap window, which basically just shows the same information we just discussed. Hit confirm swap again, and now you'll be prompted to make the final confirmation in your MetaMask wallet. Now, this is a critical step and it's important to pay attention before you make that final confirmation. Notice what the gas fee is for this transaction. This is a different fee from the liquidity pool fee we mentioned before. This is the fee that you're paying to the Ethereum network. At the time that I made this, gas prices on Ethereum are still so high on average that it does make it less functional for smaller users. Nobody's gonna pay well over $100 just to exchange $20 worth of crypto. As you can see, I don't even have enough funds to cover it, so I won't actually be making this swap today. However, if when you go to make an exchange the fees are reasonable, then you would simply click confirm in your browser wallet and the transaction should be underway. Once confirmed on the blockchain, the funds should be visible in your wallet. Back to gas. Just know that fees on Ethereum haven't always been and won't always be this prohibitively high, and they are less of an issue for users moving larger sums of crypto. But for now, the fact remains that these fees do make some of these platforms less attractive to retail users. Of course, there are also decentralized exchanges on other smart contract platforms with potentially lower fees. They'll work in a very similar way to what we outlined here, but of course the exact details will be unique to both the platform and the underlying network. One last thing to remember about decentralized exchanges. Because they're basically autonomous and run solely on a blockchain, there's no real way currently to use them as an on-ramp into crypto from fiat. This means you'll first need to purchase some Ethereum or other token that's supported before you can begin making swaps on a DEX. So if you're looking to get involved and just need to purchase that first ETH, why not get it from the StormGain cryptocurrency exchange? StormGain is not only one of the hottest up-and-coming exchanges out there, it also offers several valuable perks such as a loyalty program, bonuses for referrals, annual interest on crypto deposits, and using the official app, you can even begin cloud mining cryptocurrency for free today. Whether you want to start using decentralized platforms, or you just want to purchase and hold Ethereum, Bitcoin, stablecoins, or dozens of other cryptocurrencies, then just know that StormGain offers a little bit more than some other exchanges, so be sure to check them out. Okay, once again we've come to the end of our video, and I feel that I need to let you all know that we've really only scratched the surface. There's a ton of other things to learn about and discover with decentralized exchanges, so be sure to keep exploring and learning. To that end, you'll want to keep up on the latest developments out there. So for that, come check us out at beincrypto.com, where you'll find daily updates, analysis, and more. Also, don't forget about our other content right here on YouTube, such as interviews, educational videos, and our bi-weekly news show. And lastly, if trading is your thing, then come join our trading community on Telegram, where you'll get access to the latest technical analysis from our top traders. As always, thanks to all of you for watching, and we'll see you right here again with another video real soon.